Ventotene, a small Italian island and a national park as well. It's geographically small but historically big. It has 700 inhabitants in the summer and 200 in the winter. It is nearly 3 kilometers long and 800 square meters wide. It's a part of the Pontina archipelago in the Tyrrhenian Sea. If you remember the previous videos, we've also been to the Ponza island of this archipelago. Ventotene was formed 1,700,000 years ago by volcanic movements and eruptions. The traces of the million-year formation stages can be seen on the huge rocks. The rocks mostly formed by the cool down of the lava flow. Like all volcanic regions, the soil is quite fertile. It has a sparkling sea. One of the reasons of this beautiful sea is a special moss. The speciality of this moss is that it releases very high amounts of oxygen into the sea. And this means a suitable living environment for many different sea creatures. It has an interesting underwater for diving enthusiasts. For visitors without diving experience, scuba diving tours are organized, of course with a professional diver, and without going too deep. It costs 60 euros. For those who don't dare to do this, there is a snorkeling dive on the surface. It is down in the protected area of the national park that boats aren't allowed to enter. The price of this experience is lower, which is 20 euros. The small arbor of Ventotene Island is an important one because it was built 2000 years ago during the Roman Empire. It is still used. This is what the architectural genius is. It has remained as it is. No other arbor was needed. In ancient times, it used to be closed at night with a special system and opened during the day. The rocks were carved for various purposes. The same rock cavity is still functional today, used as shops, pubs and restaurants. Everything is as the Romans left. And not a museum, it's living. So the arrival on the Ventotene Ten Island is through this arbor. Let's come to the historical importance of this place. This is where the idea of the European Union flashed for the first time as a lightning. Altiero Spinelli, a political prisoner exiled here during the Second World War. He prepared a statement in 1941 along with two other intellectuals, Ernesto Rossi and Eugenio Colorbi. The statement is called the Ventotena Manifesto, so, the very birthplace of the European Union is this island. Altiero Spinelli, the originator, the intellectual father of a free and united Europe, um, he later became a deputy of the European Parliament after the foundation of the European Union. The idea was good, but was Europe ready for it? A union of the same continental countries that fought with each other throughout the history until recently. Frankly, it has never been a real union. Historical doctrines were never forgotten. Egoism and hypocrisy are still increasingly existing. In case of any problem, you know, from economical crisis to energy wars to irregular immigration, and inevitably, this insincerity feeds populist and neo-fascist politicians. The anti-fascist originator of the European Union idea, Alfiero Spirilli, in exile on this island until Mussolini was caught, could he figure out the actual situation of Europe? Who knows? There is another island nearby, almost in the swimming distance, it's called Santo Stefano, the island of prison. During the Kingdom of Naples, a prison was built here by King Ferdinand to imprison opponents. And this has always been the case throughout the history. In Italy, during the fascism period, opponents of the regime were imprisoned on this island. In this building, the window system of the cells didn't let the prisoners to see the beautiful view. They couldn't even understand where they were. 
An important name imprisoned on this island because of being against fascism was Sandro Pertini, who later became the seventh president of Italy. President Sandro Pertini was perhaps the most beloved, proud and trusted president so far by the Italians. Let's go back further. Ventotain Island was chosen as a place of exile during the Roman Empire as well. Emperor Augusto, who gave his name to the month of August, exiled his daughter Julia here. Ventotene used to be the exile destination during the throne fights of the empire. It is said that Emperor Augusto sent his daughter Julia here upon the intrigues of his second wife Livia. So Julia ended up here, but she liked Ventotene. The ruins of her residence, known as Villa Giulia, are still visible on the island. So, Ventotene has always been synonymous with the exile and distance. If you visit here, especially not in the high tourist season, you can easily understand why. An island on its own, living silently, without ambition. In the summer, in spite of many visitors, there is no artificiality for tourists. And how to arrive here? From the Formia town, there are fast ferries and car ferries. Coming here by car isn't a good idea. The whole island life takes place in an area of 800 square meters. Everywhere is in the walking distance. The roads are quite narrow. So narrow that sometimes a careless driver may even fall into the sea in the arbor area. It's easy to find accommodation. There are hotels, apartments and pensions. We've booked through amoventotene.it, which means I love Ventotene. Ventotene etymologically might mean the place that holds the wind. Vento tiene. What about the beaches? There are three beaches, all in the walking distance. One is on the rocks, the other two are sandy beaches. The small one is in the arbor, the other is the main beach in the center of the village. Renting a boat is an alternative to swim touring around the island. The island is rocky, so frankly there aren't sheltered sandy bays around, but we prefer renting a daily boat. You know why? For silence and for being closer to the nature without many people around. The boat costed 60 euros per day. Regarding the food, we had lunch on the boat, we bought sliced pizza from a place in the harbor. They make also pizza with seafood. There is also another place in the upper village, a bakery actually. There are many delicious and cheap lunch alternatives in this bakery as well. They even make crackers with lentils. The green lentils of this island are famous. Due to the volcanic soil, a delicate green lentil grows here with tiny grains. They make its soup, its salad and even its bread. Apart from the lentil, there is another legume called cicerchia, not bean, not chickpea, it's delicious. Ventotene is one of the places in which cicerchia grows well. Regarding the dinner, I can say that almost all the restaurants I saw seemed good. The usual menu is based on lentils, seafood and other legumes. We ate in a restaurant in the arbor, fish and octopus with mashed broad bean. Including dessert and a bottle of white wine, we paid 80 euros for two persons. It could have been cheaper if we had chosen an ordinary fish. I mean, the usual cost of a good dinner with cereal, local food and a modest bottle of wine would cost about 25 euros per person. I said modest wine, but remember that we are in Italy. So even if you open the cheapest wine, it's difficult to get a bad one. So, this is Ventotene. If you wish to come, distance, exile, wind, volcanic rocks. These are the keywords.